G'day, it's Paul, the local guide here again, just giving you a, another quick tutorial. A really common question I get is about what tripods I use, and the answer is I use different ones for different occasions. I'm sure you can hear my dog wandering around in the background there. It's a dog named Cat. You'll probably see her sooner or later. Before I get onto tripods and monopods themselves and introduce you to the ones I use, I want to talk about how you actually connect your camera to the tripod. Um, it doesn't really matter whether it's your phone and you're using a selfie stick or you're using your 360 camera for street view or you're using your normal camera. Mine's an Olympus mirrorless. Um, I use these little plates and I use an Arca mount. Now the reason I use these things is they mate together and they're a really quick way to put your camera on and off the tripod safely but more importantly because the little plate's nearly always mounted to your camera you're not exercising that screw thread in the camera because if you frankly if you bugger that up it's going to be a pretty hefty repair bill so you want to look after your camera as much as you can um, these things hold them really, really securely. These particular ones are by Peak Design, which I kind of like. But I also use ones from ME Photo, and I use generic Chinese ones. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is a generic Chinese one that I probably got on eBay. Um, there's always good options. When you're connecting one of these things to your camera, so let's put this one on the Theta. It's normally on the Ollie, but put it on the Theta. They just twist on, and then you tighten up the screw. So people ask how tight. For the, for the Theta, it's a pretty weak little thing, so I just use an Isipos stick and I tighten it up a bit. And that that's enough for the Theta because it's not the strongest device in the world. Now for the Olympus, when I put it on there, I'll usually use a key or a coin, whatever I happen to have handy. So let's just pop this one on the Olympus because this is where it normally lives. Just got to get it the right way around because it attaches to this little band on here. Just grab my keys, just put it in the right place, and now I'll tighten it up. So you don't need to tighten very much at all. So if you over tighten the thing, you are going to wreck that little screw mount in the camera. They're not that strong. So I often see people hoiking them with big screwdrivers and things, and there's just no point. Now, the other thing I'll show you around tripods is I don't always use one. This camera, for example, has 5-axis stabilisation. Absolutely amazing stabilisation. I can hand-hold this thing for 4 seconds without needing a tripod. But I do need a way to secure it to me, and I use a wrist strap. So the wrist strap mounts into the camera mount and underneath the camera. So this is one of those peak design things I was talking about. They make some pretty clever stuff, and it's a nice feel with this camera. It's got a really nice balance. It's probably not the right option for a smaller camera, I do have one on my EM10, but it doesn't quite feel right on that one because it doesn't have this nice chunky grip in the front. So mounting the Arca plate, Arca is a brand, but you know, they've all just become Arca plates, onto your tripod or monopod is easily enough. You just screw it onto the, the thing that sticks out of the top of that. So all good. Again, these don't have to be super tight, so yeah, that's enough. You don't need to go hooking these things up really hard. So I'm going to start with this one because this is probably the one I use the most with Street View, especially if I'm shooting from the car. So it's an extendable monopod. It's got three little feet on the bottom. So it can stand by itself on the ground on those occasions when you want it to. But it also gets much, much, much longer. So what I do is I stick the thing on my centre console of my car and I poke it out through the sunroof in the top and then I secure it so the camera can't wiggle around too much. When you're actually doing that, and I'll show you the theta, it's important to make sure that this part of the camera is what's facing forwards, not the lenses. A lot of the time when I see people making street view, they're facing these lenses forward. There's two issues with that. The first thing is the interesting stuff is on the sides of the road not in front of you or behind you but also if you hit something if a bit of a rock flies through the air from another car there goes the dog in the background you're actually going to break these lenses and they're really painful to replace you're going to have to send the thing back 
So if you run it this way round, you've got much less risk. So the second one I'm going to talk about, while my dog eats a plant behind me, is the monopod. So this one's by Manfrotto, I think. Um, always buy good quality camera gear. Don't buy the crap ones. I've had this thing since the 80s, and it's just keeps on keeping on. So this one, much like the one with feet, extends out nice and long, but this is designed for a heavier camera. So I don't tend to use this one much with Street View, it's a bit heavy, but I do use this a lot if I'm shooting sports or if I'm shooting in a theatre. So I do a, a lot of plays and dance things and stuff like that. This is awesome for that because it's unobtrusive, no one will fall over it, but it gives you the stability to shoot in those really dark environments. Okay, this is my big tripod. So this is the big hefty one I use when I'm out doing night photography, light painting, um, beach sunsets, sunrises, all those kinds of things where I want a nice heavy tripod to keep the camera no matter what the weather conditions are. This thing will stand still in about a 60 km an hour wind. More than that, and you need to hang a bag off the little hook in the bottom full of sand or rocks or something like that. So the next thing to talk about with tripods is heads. I hate those bog standard heads that come on tripods with a passion. So I much prefer a nice pistol grip head. This is a Vanguard one, there's plenty of them. Uh, the Vanguard ones are probably in the higher price range for these beasties. But you can get ones like Slick and things like that that are made in Japan and they're only about a hundred bucks. These things go up to about three or four hundred dollars. Um, you can get a more expensive version of this thing but my camera's not heavy enough to bother with it. This head when it's locked properly, will hold about five or six kilos. So it's everything from your great big DSLR that I used to have before I got smart and got a small mirrorless, um, down to what I shoot with today. Again, arca plate on the top. And the handy thing about this sort of head is you can make this thing perfectly level, which means if you want to do panoramas, you can just unlock and turn. Really cool shit, really simple. It's got all the extensions and things like that as well. Now, one funny side of this one that I can show you, only because it is actually funny, if I ex extend the middle pole out of here, and I'll have to say, this is how I got in trouble with customs once, flying into America, having this in my bag, which on the X-ray looks remarkably like a rifle, didn't bother them at all, they just didn't care. But last time I came back to Australia, they were very interested in this and insisted on having a look, even though, the bag had already been searched when it came out of the plane because it had those Australian Customs stickers on it, which means they've opened it. Um, so they wanted to have another look at it. Whatever. Just slows you down a little bit. It's part of that travel thing. And this last one I'm going to show you is a baby. This is my ME Photo Backpacker Air. This thing is awesome because the whole tripod, head and everything, is less than a kilo. So if you're flying, or hiking, or you want to walk around somewhere for a long distance. One of my favourite spots to photograph is Wreck Beach. It's nearly a two kilometre walk from the car. Carrying that big tripod, pain in the bum. This one, great stuff. It's got similar sort of head on it. It's not as good as the pistol grip one, obviously, but it's nice. It's good enough for this sort of travel photography. It's got a plate, like the others. It's actually a fairly small plate. It's got little grip holders, so when you put its plate on there, which has got its own special one, um, they don't slide off, so it's a nice secure tripod. The centre arm of it comes out completely and becomes a selfie stick or monopod. Great for street view. Holding this up above your head and you can do your street view really easily. So it's really handy for that and the rest of it quite good. Um, all tripods have these sorts of features, which is really handy. You can whip the legs out sideways. Um, some of them are like this one have almost the ability to go upside down. So they have different places where they'll lock. This is really, really handy for um, photography where you might need to perch on a rock or something like that. You don't want to get all that height, you want to keep it down low. Particularly if you're using a light tripod like this one on a windy day. If you can keep it down low to the ground, you won't have any problems at all. If it's up high, it's going to jiggle around like a bastard. So really really useful. Also great for macro photography if you're into mushrooms or flowers or bugs or whatever you can get down really close to them. The big Vanguard has one feature that I didn't show you and I won't now because the uh, recorder is actually sitting on it but um, 
that one has an arm that can turn out like this. So when it comes out of the tripod, it'll go over and you can put it down like that. Which means not only can it get close to the ground, you can get really close to the ground by putting the arm down, which can be really handy for macro photography. So how does all this affect recording for local guides in Street View? Well, with the Street View, probably anything you use is okay. Um, when I'm using in the car, that monopod's nice and stable. Um, I can lock it into place with a little device I made that sits on the, the front of the sunroof and the roof bar, so it can't sway around, and more importantly, no one can grab it. The other ones, it really depends on what you're doing. So if I was to go into a restaurant, for example, and set up that big tripod, then they'd probably wonder what I was doing. So in those situations, I might use the Backpacker Air, but it is bright red, it does attract a little bit of attention. But if I just want to plonk something down on the table for a quick 360, about this little boy. So this one just slots onto the bottom of the camera, just like the others do. I wouldn't put a plate on it, because it's tiny. You can't really tighten it up too much anyway. But this is a really handy little thing. I'm pretty sure I got this for free from someone. But um, it's really useful, I use it quite a bit. So it's always in the camera bag. It's strong enough to hold up the, the mirrorless, and I used to put a Canon 5D on it, so it handles that too, as long as you brace the lens on something. So, the other things that I'll use, the monopod from the ME Photo, is a really common one, because um, if you're negotiating with the place, and you're doing it as a Street View trusted photographer, obviously you're going to sit down, you're going to have a meeting with them, you're going to talk about it, you're going to come to some kind of contractual and financial arrangement. But as a local guide, you're not going to do that, probably. You may talk to them, you may not. Not everyone feels confident in doing that sort of thing. So the monopod, while you're sitting down at the table and you want to get a 360 to show the vibe of the place, to put onto maps, really cool thing to do. Lots and lots of places need 360 photos. The Street View app will actually tell you which ones do. It'll, you zoom into an area and it just gets a little orange icon on it and says, this one wants a 360, which is handy. Um, so you can just pop the theta on this thing up on the top on its plate, stick the thing up in the air, do your shot with your remote control on the Street View app, pop it down again, chances are no one will even notice. So if you're not a confident person, and despite what people think of me, I'm not, I'm actually quite an introvert, um, I'll often use this. If I want to do a particularly carefully planned shot because maybe there's difficult light or something like that, then you're just going to have to do it properly and you're going to have to use the tripod and you're probably going to have to ask. Um, most places don't mind if you explain what you're doing it for and they understand that you're going to bring more people to them and they're quite happy. I have to keep changing tripods to do this because, well, you know, I need, keep needing them all to do the actual video so a continuity person would shoot me. But that's okay. That's not my job when I work on a film. I do stills. No continuity in stills. It's all good. What I wanted to show you was how to put a base plate onto the Theta. So this is the little base plate from the ME Photo one. It's a great one for the Theta because it's not particularly obtrusive in the 360 images. So all you do, honk him on, hold the screw, give it a bit of a twist until it's almost down there. And we find our stick that I conveniently dropped on the ground, of course. Love these professional videos, don't you? And then you just tighten it up a little bit with the icy pole stick, remember? Cheapest screwdriver in the world. You do have to eat the icy pole, it's a hard life. So that secures the Theta really nicely. When I'm using the one that I use for Street View most often, Theta goes onto the top. And you remember before I told you about those pins on the bottom? They slide into these receptacles. Um, also it fits well on the ME Photo tripod, but this one happens to have them as well. Not all the plates do, so if you're shopping around and you're looking for the top plate and the bottom plate, um, try them to make sure you get compatible ones. You can get the things on eBay for about $3, probably with free postage from China that takes a million years to get to you, or you can just go down to your local camera shop, they're generally not very expensive down there. Um, a proper Arca Swiss plate, the branded version, they're around $50 Australian, the, um, and that's what I've got on the, the Vanguard. The um, other ones, the unbranded ones, they're probably the same ones you get on eBay because they probably buy them for three bucks, but they tend to be about 30 for the two plates together. If you buy them together, at least you know they're going to work together. They do range in quality a lot, and some of them have little vaguely helpful things like level bubbles on them. Not all of them do. 
Um, I find I don't use that terribly much, so it's probably not really worth it. So the most important thing is keeping your gear secure and keeping it stable. So this one's good enough when it's anchored to do the street view from the car, which I do quite a bit now. I think I've done nearly 60 streets and paths with this thing. So it's been interesting, lots of fun. Um, that's probably all I'm going to talk about for tripods for now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you were a continuity freak, you probably didn't. You'd probably give me a thumbs down. That's okay. Um, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Give me some comments, especially if you think I've said anything wrong. I'd be really interested to hear from you and happy to have a chat about it. So happy local guiding. It's a giant mosquito flying around my face right now. See this thing? It's huge. Bloody Australia. Um, Anyway, happy local guiding, enjoy yourself, enjoy creating your street view imagery if you're lucky enough to have one of these things. So the 150 people that went to the big summit this year called Connect Live over in San Francisco, um, we all got an amazing surprise gift. Everybody got a Theta V. On top of getting to go over there for the, the event, getting to meet all those people, that's just pretty amazing really. Certainly unexpected. Anyway, enjoy the video, thumbs up, bye. Thank you.